Hey guys, Saker here, and welcome aboard the Saab 37 Vigan. To start off the Vigan tutorial series, this video will cover a cockpit orientation, aircraft startup, and a takeoff. Let's begin. Let's orient ourselves with a left to right sweep of the cockpit that will touch upon just about everything required to use this aircraft in DCS. If you're looking for a more in-depth explanation of what everything in here does, I highly recommend checking out Chuck's guide. The link for that will be in the description. Behind our left shoulder, we have our data cartridge receptacle, our landing gear lever, and auto throttle lever. Forward of this, we have our instrument lights, our panel lights, cockpit floodlights, and radar brightness controls. On this panel, we have our master volume control, which controls the volume of our RWR and our sidewinder tone. Unfortunately, these two can't be adjusted independently. They're all tied to this knob. Below that, we have our EP13 contrast and brightness controls, which adjust the Maverick scope mounted here. Here we have our radar stick, our master mode selector, and radio controls. To the left we have our throttle with its uncaged lever here. In front of that is our canopy control lever. Here we have our electrics master switch, the low pressure fuel valve, the generator switch, the start switch, and the ignition switch, which should always be set in this position to on. Under here, we can find our landing and taxi light switch, as well as our emergency light switch. Here are the button slash indicator lights for the stability augmentation system, our attitude hold, and our altitude hold. Below is the airspeed indicator in kilometers per hour with the Mach number displayed in a window here. Moving down is the radio stack with its tune knobs and our thrust reverser handle. Up here we have our angle of attack indicator, our master caution and our master caution clear button, the attitude direction indicator, and the altimeter in meters. The QFE can be adjusted with this knob here. Centrally, we have our HUD, our HUD position lever here, and our HUD brightness knob here. This is the radar screen with our compass screen and RWR around it. Below this is our parking brake. Here we can find our Maverick sight, the clock, a HUD declutter switch, and our altimeter source selector with radar and barometric modes. This is our backup ADI, backup altimeter, and magnetic compass. This is the weapon release light and our transonic warning light. Underneath, we can find our G-meter, backup airspeed indicator, our N2 RPM, and more importantly our after afterburner stage indicator. Below this is the engine pressure ratio indicator between the high and low pressure turbines. This window displays our selected waypoint. Below we can find our range to selected waypoint, as well as our fuel gauge. Here is our oxygen lever, along with our CK-37 flight computer and controls. Here we can find our waypoint selectors, as well as our ILS frequency selector. To the left, we can find various controls for our jammer and elint pod. This dial sets our RWR mode, currently in lights and sound. We can set it to lights only or off. 
Below that, we have our exterior light switches, our anti-collision light, our navigation lights, formation lights, and position lights. Here we can find the jettison buttons for our fuel tanks and our weapons. This knob is our weapon selector. Behind it is our weapon interval selector, along with weapon mode switches. And last but not least, up behind our right shoulder we can find our ejection seat arming lever. Let's get into the startup. The startup for this aircraft is very simple. First, you want to turn on your master electrics, your low pressure fuel valve, your generator, uncage your throttle, and hit the engine starter. The ignition stays on. The master warning can be cleared with this button in between the lights. Next, we can close our canopy. As the engine starts up, we'll input our data cartridge here. As we wait for the CK-37 to warm up, we can turn on our oxygen. And once we get out of the hangar, we can arm our ejection seat. Now that our CK-37 is warmed up, we can load the cartridge into the system. Switch the data, data panel selector to Ref Lola, input, and then enter the code 9099. And put that code in our starting waypoint, LSSKU. The 9 will flash as the cartridge is being loaded, and once it's done, it will be replaced with all zeros. We can now switch back to output and have the CK-37 display our coordinates as well as our navigation system status. Now we want to check that our QFE matches our airbase QFE by opening the kneeboard and reviewing this. The QFE is correct. And then finally, we want to make sure that our takeoff heading matches what we're expecting by switching this to Banagrons and reviewing the numbers displayed. Now we can release the parking brake by tapping our tow brakes. I'll do a quick cut here, and I'll see you guys when I'm ready to take off. Alright guys, welcome back, and here we are ready to take off. Let's go ahead and arm our ejection seat and switch our master mode selector to nav. Our rotate speed for takeoff will be around 280 kilometers an hour. This is conveniently dis displayed by a timeline bar here at the bottom of the HUD. When the horizontal bar fills up and reaches these vertical lines, you know it's time to rotate. So let's go. And that concludes today's tutorial. If there's any specific topic you want to see covered on the Vigan, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time.